I'm Roberts and I'm here to give you a presentation on city design, specifically the difference between a North American perspective of city design and a Dutch perspective of city design. Do you know that our cities are planned? Um, lots of people don't know that our cities are actually planned and designed by civil engineers and by city planners. Um, just as design can affect big companies on being bankrupt or profitable, bad design can also influence our cities. And because over 83% of Americans live in cities, bad city design can really affect an overwhelming majority of Americans. What if there was a way to design our cities better? A better way to design our cities that would lower the cost of living, uh, make us, uh, keep us more physically fit, better city design could affect our mental health, and a better city design could also affect our wallets. I believe that the way that North America has been pursuing city design for the last 70 years is in a very negative way, and I think the solution lies in the Netherlands. So the difference between bad city design and good city design. So in North America it is um, very car dominant. Uh, there's lots of car dependency, you need a car to get around, and zoning, co uh, zoning codes regulate housing and regulate a very homogeneous way of building cities. And there's a lot of isolation by design. Meanwhile, the Dutch way of city design has, is characterized by a lot of transit options, specifically with buses, trams, and bikes, as well as multi-use development in a very interconnected city. Having more dense and better designed cities is better for the environment as well. Right here you can see a graph that shows um, on this x-axis popula population density and the y-axis your total emissions per capita. Uh, Houston, which is one of the worst cities for city design, is all the way at the top. And then Amsterdam is way down here. Not very much more dense, but a large impact on our CO2 emissions. And the fact that Amsterdam is right there is just because the Dutch electrical energy grid is very coal and oil dependent. Being better for the environment is simply a measure of efficiency. Trains are four times more efficient than cars, and bikes are up to 97% energy efficient. And tr trains are very easy to power with renewable energy compared to cars which require massive batteries which take out large chunks of the earth. It's also better for our health. Car dependency is a factor for obesity in the United States. There are many studies that can prove that. And it's not the leading factor of obesity. There's many factors into the obesity question. And car dependency certainly, certainly has to be a factor that must be considered. Uh, the soccer mom and dad does not exist in the Netherlands. And this is because in the United States, until you're 16, you need it. You can, and you can drive and you can get places. But in the Netherlands, you can bike to places. You can take a train or a tram places. So it's much easier for kids to get themselves to soccer practices than it is in the United States. Also, teen depression. Um, teen depression is only going up in the United States, especially since COVID. Well, in the Netherlands, it's gone down over the pandemic, actually. Better for our finances. It's $600 cheaper to, for a family to rent a house in the Netherlands due to density. Not to mention that car dependency shackles us to owning a car, and a new compact car price is $26,000. Compare that to a public transit yearly pass in Amsterdam, which is only $1,300. So how can we change? It's obvious that we must change our cities. We must spend more on other forms of transit than cars. What I mean by this is until we put more effort into rail lines, tram lines, and bike lanes, until we put more money into those than we're putting into our inner cities, we will always be shackled to the car. That was in the details. There's lots of public transport that many different cities built. They built wonderful uh, bus harbor transit systems, but it, wonderful trams. They don't truly interconnect them into the city uh, until we start interconnecting our public transport and our new urban developments. If they won't actually become part of the city. Um, also, as well, more forgiving zoning codes. Uh, being able for homeowners to build more density into their houses. Uh, being able for build more units on their property. All of that can increase density and um, not amaze, or all of that can increase density in very small minute details.